Hello everybody, welcome to the new video. As you might have noticed by the title of this video, today we're gonna talk about optimization for player unknowns battlegrounds. I'm sure some of you already have the game. If you do, you're in luck because it's a fucking great game. But it runs kind of shitty on lower end PCs or even medium end. And even some people with high end specifications complain about low FPS. So today we are going to address those issues and make your game run smooth. For reference, uh, I went, so I have GDX 960 and FX A350 octa-core CPU, and I went from 20 to 30 FPS to 60 to 70, and in dense cities about 40, which is a great improvement, and uh, I have better visibility of the enemies, and everything runs smoother actually. So I'm pretty satisfied with the results. Let's get into the business. So first of all, uh, open up Steam and right click Player Unknown Battlegrounds, go to Properties. And inside the Properties window, uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, this is the Metro UI skin for Steam. So go to Set Launch Options and type this. So it's a minus Use All Available Cores. I'm going to put all of this stuff in the description so you can see and just copy paste it. Uh, by the way, some people suggest adding uh, malloc equals system, but that's an ARMA launch option, not Unreal Engine 4, so those people are just full of shit. So okay, just use this. Also, you can use the SM4, but it's questionable whether that actually works, because Unreal Engine uh, bakes shader models, so they can't really be switched. Usually it's SM5, but I'll leave it up to you if you want to add that or not. I would just recommend adding this line. So after you've done this, you can close Steam and everything and right click your desktop, go to NVIDIA control panel if you have NVIDIA card obviously. If you don't, you can just open the AD Radeon Center, whatever it's called, I forgot, CCC. And in here go to manage 3D settings, switch to program settings tab, wait for it to load of course, and select the program to customize when this go to tslgame.exe. Or you can just press add and it will show up. Okay, so here you can uh, ramp up the anisotropic filtering. This makes textures at low angles look better. And it really basically has zero performance hit. You should enable FXAA and TA aliasing because you should disable it in game. Go to maximum pre rendered frames and put that to one. Optimize for compute per performance on. Prefer maximum performance on power management mode, disable and such ping sample optimization, and clamp negative load bias. And also, of course, enable threaded optimization. It's basically the same thing as use all available cores, but this also improves it. And disable triple buffering and vertical synchronization. That's basically it. all you have to do here. You can just close this as well. Player Unknown Battlegrounds has three configuration files that you have to edit. So in order to help everybody with that, I've made a little application that you can open. And basically there are three files, gameusersettings.eni, engine.eni, and scalability.eni. When you open up each of these files, you will see your configuration file on the left and suggested config entries on the right. Of course, my config entries are already set, but basically if they weren't, so all I would have to do is select all of this, add in some blank lines, paste this, and there we go. So basically, you should lower the resolution quality. And no, this is not the same thing as screen scale that's in game. This is different. Uh, I'm not really sure how the resolution quality works, but it does improve your FPS much better. Also put view distance quality to one or zero. Of course, that would mean you wouldn't be able to see trees and buildings up far away, especially when you're jumping from the plane at the start of the game. But you should still get better FPS because you don't see all that clutter in the distance. You can put the anti-alias into zero, like I've said before, or you can leave it at one. Disable shadow quality, post-processing, effects, foliage, disable true sky, ground clutter and height field shadow quality. All of this together would will improve your frame rate quite a bit. When you're done with game user settings, you can save this and open up the engine INI. This is the stuff that's already here. 
and all of the next is was added except for accessibility. So let's go over. So same thing here. I would just have to select all of this and paste it here and that would be it. So to go over all of the settings, minimal desired frame rate, I mean, that speaks for itself. Smoothed frame rate range will smooth up your FPS if it's between 60 and 144, basically what usual uh, refresh rate is. And now you can disable or well, lower the quality of pixel shaders. Uh, the time between purge and pending object, kill objects, is basically the time after a body disappears and something that has been destroyed disappears. And you can increase this to 45, it's usually a lot lower. You can put this to, let's say, 30 or 45, and that will make the checks more rare, and in the end give you a little bit of performance boost. And now this is the render settings. Uh, this is basically post-processing and uh, textures and quality of the game itself. I don't really want to talk about all of these in particular, but basically add this up, you get FPS in game. And for the last part, a script slash engine dot local player, you can, you can, but you don't have to put this. This makes uh, the FOV match your screen resolution. So if you were, if you have a 16 cross 9 uh, monitor, you should put this because you will get a, a lot bigger FOV. This is a PC game and it really doesn't make sense to play a PC game in like, what, 70, 80 FOV. When you're done with this, you can also save it. I'm not going to save it because already it's been set. And now in scalability, uh, this file should be empty. So you can just copy paste everything and paste it here. Basically, this lowers, additionally lowers shadow quality, post-processing quality, anti-aliasing, foliage, and basically the quality of anti-aliasing. So you can just save this, do this, you can close the app, and that basically it. That will give you a much, much bigger boost in FPS. Okay, and if you want to download the PU Battleground Tricker, you can just open up your browser and go to PUBG, so as a plain player's unknown battlegrounds, T, Dot .shartools.com. I will put the link in the description bar as well. And you can just press the download latest version, that will get you the file, and you can just run it, and that's it. If you don't want to use the tool, that will get you, no big deal. To get manually to those folders, you can open up your file explorer, explorer and type app data. So it's a percentage, app data, percentage enter, go one folder up to app data, local, scroll down to TSL game, save, config, windows no editor, and here are the three files. So you can just open them up, copy paste from the description or whatever you want, and that's basically it. When you save all of these, make sure you press right click on all three files, go to properties and mark them as read only. If you use the application, all of this will be done automatically. So use the application, when you press save, the files will be checked to read only because that way the game cannot overwrite, change or delete your special configuration entries that you put here. So let's say if you didn't put it to read only, there's a chance if you change options in game that the game will overwrite or delete everything you've written inside here. So when you're done with this, you can just start the game and enjoy the better FPS. For reference, uh, well, let's start the game. At the menu, I had about 60, 50, 60 FPS. Of course, the quality was a bit bigger. Now when I start the game, the quality will deteriorate a little bit. I have to put down the taskbar because it doesn't work right if it's left or right, so I should report that bug, I keep forgetting. Basically, when you start the game, as you can see, it loads much faster, all this objects and stuff, they load much faster, it's not too dark, it's not too bright, actually, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Of course, there are no shadows, like I've said, so let's just wait for the game to load. Okay, there we go. I'm not sure if you can see, in the top corner, I have about 100 and... Uh, let's, let's run it up to 120 FPS, which is double the improvement that I had from before. 
and even when I play the game I still have about 60 to 70 while playing N40 in dead cities so that's a big improvement compared to what it was before. So that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you managed to get some more frames from the game. And good luck out there. I'm, I'm sure you're gonna need it. Okay, so thank you for watching the video. And I will see you next time when we will discuss something else. Take care and goodbye.